When I saw the clock, I was immediately drawn to it. There was something about the design that just really appealed to me. There was something about the curved shape at the front and the way that it tapered back. I was very happy to see that it worked when I plugged it in. The clock dates from the 1960s, making this clock about 60 years old. And it's amazing when it still works, with such a smooth motion. Now, as you can see around the back, the interface is so much simpler than modern clocks. There's two dials, one to adjust the time, and then the other one to adjust the alarm. And the alarm is either on or off. So let's set about taking this apart. To get inside this clock, you have to remove the front lens. And you just can use one of these tools to slide it underneath and unhook the catch on the bottom and on the top. And then the lens comes off. Now around the back, there are two screws. The screw on the right, how you undo. And then the screw on the left. And then the whole assembly just pushes from the back and out the front. And here, I'm having a little bit of trouble, so I'm just going to use the wire to help push that through. And out it comes. So it looks like there is an AC motor and an electromagnet that actuates the alarm. I don't see any quartz movements in this, so it must predate quartz clocks. And here you can see some of the gears. It just looks like regular gear reduction. There's no escapement mechanism in there. So as you may have noticed on the front, it said it had a lighted display. Which is one of the reasons why I wanted to take this apart, because there was no light. So it looks like this is the bulb. And this is the diffuser that allows the light to shine through the faceplate. So I'm guessing this has a regular bulb in it. And let's just confirm that by unwrapping the bulb cover. Now let's just carefully unwrap this foil to expose the light bulb underneath. Makes a very satisfying crinkling sound as you pull it out. Okay, the adhesive is not too tough, it comes off quite nicely. And now we can see the bulb. So the bulb comes out. And as I suspected, it's just a regular bulb. That probably burnt out years ago. So I'm just going to wrestle these wires off with a soldering iron. Nothing too graceful there. And yank on the wire and then it comes off. Ooh, a bit hot. Okay, just try one more time. There we go. Perfect. And this is the wire to the bulb, putting up a bit of a fight, but I win in the end. So the bulb is connected to the 120 volts AC, but on closer inspection, there is a 40k ohm resistor dropping the voltage, which probably means that the bulb is around 12 volts. Before I went too far though, I decided to check if the lighted faceplate was even worth looking at. I used a button cell battery and a white LED and placed it in the opening. I was kind of mad at myself when I noticed that I damaged the clock face, but plastic was very brittle, and unfortunately, nothing lasts forever. I've decided to work on the external cosmetics of the clock, and to put it back together with no light. But before we put it back together, let's take a look at the ingeniously simple alarm clock mechanism. So as you can see, as the clock is rotating, the shark fin moves around on the cog, and when it reaches the alarm position, it drops into a hole, and turns the alarm on. Then you can turn the alarm off by inserting the switch lever, or if you let the clock keep going, the shark fin reopens the switch and turns the alarm off. Simple, but effective. To give the plastic a bit of uh, new life, I'm using this uh, polish. It's not really designed for plastic, but I've had some success. So you basically rub it on, and then you buff it off. And it takes some of the oxidization of the plastic out. I'm going to do the same for the plastic lens. As you can see, the lens has some wear and tear on it. So I just use a small amount. Rub it in with a lint-free cloth. And then buff it out. And it takes out some of the oxidization and makes the plastic look a bit clearer. So now the clock piece just moves in, and we've got to tighten both screws. 
And one step I missed was resoldering the wire. Eh, not a big deal. You didn't really need to see it. It wasn't that interesting. And then we're going to reattach the front lens, putting the clips in, and done. Yeah, so all that's left to be done is to set the alarm for midnight and wait for the witching hour. Thanks for watching.